So text mining refers to extracting information from text primarily. It has different forms. Information retrieval, um, which is what search engines would do, is one form of text mining. When you look for something and you find it. Um, information extraction is another instance where, for instance, you want to find entities in a text and relations between them. Um, and there, so there is a query or a goal that you are looking for, and then you mine it from the collection of documents. Um, unlike that, text analysis is processing collection of documents. Um, so it will be given a, a set of documents, finding patterns in those texts, uh, figuring out whether we have nouns and verbs or sequences of conjunctions and prepositions. Um, so it's really applying layers of processes um, and then eventually building a knowledge base out of that or doing something interesting with that text. So core difference, I would say, text mining is starting with a query or a goal and then extracting information. Text analysis is applying levels of processing on, on top of collections of text. I will start with the advantages. I think they would beat the disadvantages. Um, it's a source of information that's always on, and it's easy to get in the sense that if I want right now to address a certain social science problem, I can go and use a, say, Twitter API, collect a lot of data, start building tools, and uh, find the solution right away. As opposed, if I were to go to the, with the traditional methods of doing surveys, I will have to identify the people willing to take the survey, build that survey, um, find their answers, and then process that data. So using social media would give you a faster response. Um, it will also allow you to replicate studies on different populations. Um, so we could, for instance, do one uh, study on American population and then quickly move, say, to India or other studies without having to, again, find pop people who are willing to participate and so forth. Um, another advantage is the scale. So we can easily scale up to the extent that there are participants, for instance, on Twitter, and there are hundreds of millions of people there. We can scale up studies, um, which is not the same for surveys, where you will have to actually identify those participants. So surveys are not easily scalable. Uh, on the downside, I would say that social media of course, comes with the need for applying text processing, which is not perfect. Um, so you will have to apply layers of processing, which sometimes give errors. Uh, so there will be erroneous output from that text processing, which can be made up by the quantity of data that we have. Uh, but there's still a caveat that comes with social media use. Um, and another downside, which is also the case with uh, survey data, is that there is bias. Not everyone is on social media. And so there will be a bias in the kind of data that we'll collect uh, from those sources. I will start with the very basic steps of understanding computational thinking, uh, which may or may not involve necessary programming, but just understanding what it means to think computationally. And that could be a pen and paper. Um, I would also look at examples of programs starting against simple hello world kind of applications um, so you don't get frustrated from the get-go and start understanding how uh, computer programs would work. Um, and then starting with an application that you would be motivated by or excites you. Um, so whatever your interest is, it could be, for instance, finding people's values from social media or counting the number of words, whatever that would be. So going with something that once you see results, it would be motivating to, to move on. Um, and of course, talking to other people who work in that field, I think that's always helpful, not only in terms of finding immediate help, but also in terms of understanding what the benefits of using computational methods could be. So computational methods um, allow for scalability. Um, and that is an important benefit that you could say you could use computational methods to scale up your studies. So rather than using, for instance, 100 participants, you can use 100,000 participants, um, which is useful in terms of capturing um, the behavior of a larger number of, of individuals. So that is one important benefit that's provided by computational methods. Um, the other, I think, even thinking computationally and so addressing social science problems from a more engineering point of view, so having more structure and consistency, uh, which is not to suggest that social sciences wouldn't have that, 
uh, but it will be adding a mix of more algorithmical approaches to social science problems. I think that would also be very beneficial. Um, also in terms of comparing different studies uh, or understanding the relations between different factors and so forth. So one very recent piece of research that we've done in my group is detection of fake news. Uh, so figuring out whether a piece of news is fake or legitimate. Um, and that's where we use data that would be used potentially in social science studies, figure out why people are faking news and what are the characteristics of fake news. Uh, but we've done it completely computational. So we use a collection of fake news and legitimate news and then build algorithms that are now able, given a new piece of news, figure out whether it's likely to be fake or, or legitimate. 